Good morning. We welcome you to beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. We're glad to see that you're here to worship with us this morning, uh, especially as we continue in our sermon series and as we continue to keep it real, right? At Beautiful Savior, you'll see that in our sermon series for this summer as we dig into the Psalms. Pastor Tom is going to be looking at Psalm 130 today, talking about out of the depths. And so we pray for God's continued blessings on his message and on our worship here this morning. So would you please stand? And we worship this morning in the name of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our liturgy, our order of worship will be found on the screens. Let's join in singing our gathering hymn. gather as God's chosen people once more, we find ourselves seeking his promised forgiveness. Gracious God, we come stumbling into your presence. We have found our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips struggle to name what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of regret. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open us to a future in which we can be changed, and grant us grace to grow more and more in the likeness and image of Jesus Christ, our loving and forgiving Savior. Amen. Dear friends, Jesus has promised that the sins we forgive on earth will also be forgiven in heaven. Trusting confidently in that precious promise, as a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore declare to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Dear friends, you are forgiven and you are free. Live, love, and rejoice in that freedom. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. All-powerful God, in Jesus Christ you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Kristen. I'd like to invite the children to come forward for the children's message. If you're visiting with us today, we'd love to have you join us too. You can even bring adults with you if you'd like. Everyone's welcome to come up. So I'm going to have my computer screen on. If you want to peek at mine, that is great. Or Pastor Joe is going to go up right now and get it up on the big screens for us so that we can see it too, okay? Yes. But I've got both. Is that okay, Bodie? Good, okay. So today we are continuing our discussion. Good morning, can you have a seat? You can look at that screen right there, see that? Okay, otherwise you can turn and look at that one too. That one's really nice and bright, you can see that. Today we're continuing our study of the Psalms. You started last week. You know, the Psalm, Psalms are the songbook of the Bible. They're what the early Christians and even the early Israelites sang all the time. That's how they learned God's word. They sang them and prayed them in worship every week and sometimes every day. And that's what Jesus grew up singing. And Jesus would sing that every day. That's what he shared. And actually, the Psalms is the book of the Bible that Jesus quotes most. And also, there's another thing. Not only does it quote, did Jesus quote it? Did Jesus sing it? The Psalms are about Jesus. So that's why in your pews, you're going to see there's a little thing about zooming in on the Psalms because they're so important for us to learn about. Now, when you zoom in, have you ever used your computer or used your parents' um, iPad or phone? Have you zoomed in on something? Yeah. Well, you'll see up on the screen, you'll see on my screen here, that's a map of Plymouth. And you see that little red dot on there? Yeah. That's where we are right now. That's right where we are. You're right. That's beautiful Savior. But you can't tell very well what it is, can you? So we need to zoom in. Pastor Joe's going to zoom in on it for us. Let's see if I can zoom in on, our, on mine, too. Oh, mine's getting bigger. Is his getting bigger? Oop, that's looking more familiar. Is it looking better? Hey, Pastor Joe, can you go to 3D? Oh, cool. All right. Now, look at He's doing 3D. You can see the building a little better. Can you see the front entrance of the building? Yeah, yeah. yeah there's the front entrance. Maybe you came in that door. And then sometimes you go down and you come in that other door. Can you show the other door, Pastor Joe? Cool, there's the other door. You might come in that. And can you show the garden, the community garden? Oop, there it is. Oh, looks like it's already planted. And the fire pit. There's a fire pit down there. Okay, but now we're going to go and look some more at the picture. You're right, Pastor Joe. I don't need mine at all. Um, look, oh, something's wrong. Can anybody know what might be missing there? What's wrong with that picture? What's missing? Jesus. Well, Jesus is here. That's right. Jesus not standing there in the picture, but he is there. There's part of our building that's missing. It's hard to see it from here. If you notice, see the old playgrounds right there. But that new, who goes to preschool here? Your room's not on there. It's missing. This picture's wrong because it was taken a long time ago. But that's what our church would look like if we zoomed in on it. Well, today, thank you, Pastor Joe. We are zooming in on Psalm 130. And as we get a closer look of Psalm 130, we get a closer look at ourselves. And sometimes, you know, it's not easy to zoom in on ourselves. Because when we zoom in on ourselves, we might see that mm, we're kind of sinful. We don't do everything right. Sometimes we might tell a lie. Sometimes we might think a bad thought or say something bad to someone. That's not fun to do that, to think about that and to zoom in on how sinful we are. But it's important for us to do that, to realize, to zoom in that we need forgiveness. That's what's important. Psalm 130 shows that we need forgiveness. We need to be forgiven because we do bad things. 
But as we continue zooming in on 130, you're gonna hear that the Psalm says in verse eight, he himself re-redeem us. And you know who the he is? That's Jesus. Jesus already did it. Jesus redeemed us. He's the one that died on the cross for us to save us from our sins. So we don't have to have feel guilty anymore. We can remember that we are forgiven and we can be filled with joy and we can worship God with confidence in knowing that he loves us and that he is zoomed in on our lives to watch over us. Will you pray with me? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for zooming in on me and loving me so much that you would die on the cross and save me from my sins. Help me to zoom in on you. Amen. Thanks for coming up. A reading from the Psalms. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen in the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. The word of the Lord. reading from 2 Corinthians, Paul writes, Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we also speak, 
knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then Jesus went home and the crowd gathered again so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebul. And by the prince of demons, he casts out the demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then, indeed, he may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness but is guilty of an eternal sin, for they were saying he has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I hope you've had the chance to read uh, the card uh, that was distributed last weekend. If you weren't here, uh, there are some in the pew racks. We invite you to take one home and read it. It describes our summer sermon series and why we think it's so important to do what we're doing this summer. And our, uh, there's two things on this card I wanted to point out to you. Uh, we are going to be using the Psalms uh, for the day because in our lectionary, which is the readings we read every week, in addition to the Old Testament reading, the New Testament reading from the epistles and the gospel reading, there is always a psalm Uh, that is appointed for that particular Sunday. And we don't often use those psalms here at Beautiful Savior. So this summer, until Labor Day weekend, we're going to uh, interchange and put the psalm of the day uh, into the spot of the Old Testament reading. And Pastor Joe began this sermon series last week, and we're continuing it now, as I said, throughout the whole summer. And uh, the... 
uh, the impetus for this one, I uh, haven't, first of all, haven't preached on the Psalms in several years, uh, and there is a, it was a great devotion, and that's where the zoom in uh, comes from. It's on the back of the card. Uh, this, that phrase, we're indebted to Dr. Dale Meyer. Dr. Meyer is the president of Concordia Seminary in St. Louis, and his devotion book, Timely Reflections, A Minute a Day with Dale Meyer, I think it's the devotion for August 19th. Uh, he writes about zooming in on the Psalms, and he especially points out uh, the amazing obvious but amazing and often forgotten truth about how important the psalms are in the scriptures. Uh, they are the prayer book of the Bible, friends, and they are uh, the prayer book that God's people have used since before the time of Christ. And are you ready for this one? He points it out in his devotion. Uh, these are the prayers Jesus prayed, the psalms. This is how Jesus learned to pray as a little child in Nazareth uh, at the feet and on the knees of his mom, Mary, and his stepdad, Joseph. Oh, wow. And so not only are we praying with the saints of all times and all places when we pray the Psalms and when we learn them, we're praying with our Lord Christ himself because these were his prayers and he quoted them uh, amazingly often because they were such a central part of daily life for the faithful ones in that time. And so uh, zooming in on them is pretty important because uh, they have a lot to teach us. And the reason we're calling it Keeping It Real, that theme comes from the Psalms themselves because this is about as real as it gets. Folks, these are not prayers from a bygone era a couple thousand years ago, uh, just that. These are prayers that speak to the real situations that you and I face in our lives today. And so if you look on that side, the front side, where it says keeping it real to describe it for you, are you ever happy, sad, afraid, whatever emotion in life you're experiencing, there's a psalm for that. There's a psalm for every emotion in life because what we experience is nothing new because that's a biblical truth too. There is nothing new under the sun and there's nothing true that's new. Okay? Because if it's true, it's not new because truth stands the test of time. And God has revealed the truth in himself. And so we're going to keep it real this summer, and we're also going to zoom in weekly on the psalm of the day. And today we are in uh, Psalm 130, as it was read already and as Kristen shared it with the children. And uh, I really hope that uh, you'll stay with us for this series throughout the summer. Okay? And if you're going to be traveling, you can find the sermon uh, every week uh, on our YouTube channel. You can find it on the website. Here's a link to it. Uh, but let's zoom in and let's keep our relationship with God real because God is real and he's real in our lives. And so there's a struggle that's going on in Psalm 130 uh, and uh, let me read the first couple verses to you because we're going to zoom in kind of section by section. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. Okay? Out of the depths. That's uh, the theme of this week's sermon. Out of the depths. Now, I, I need to share with you uh, from another psalm. This is Psalm 69. What it means to be in the depths. Okay? This is not the shallow end of the lake. This is not the shallow end of the pool. This is not a wading pool where you splash around and have fun. Okay? That's not where the prayer is coming from. Out of the depths, listen to how David describes the depths in Psalm 69. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire. Both ends, the waters are here and rising, and the bottom is not secure. 
I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters and the flood sweeps over me. It's not the shallow end of the pool. But what's the depth? And all through the Psalms, you will find many different depths that God's people find themselves in, just like you do. Sometimes it's illness in the Psalms. Sometimes it's loneliness in the Psalms. Sometimes it's persecution in the Psalms. Sometimes it's wondering where God moved to. Sometimes the depth in the Psalms are family problems. Sometimes. And so when you zoom in, you find out what the depth of the psalm is. And back to Psalm 130, and I want to tell you, I don't think anyone here should check out yet. Because you know what the problem is? The problem is guilt. Guilt over sin. Listen to it. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. Guilt. Anyone here who's never experienced guilt in your life? Never? Good for you. Wow. I think anyone who's a parent has experienced guilt. Agreed? Anyone who is married has experienced guilt with how they have treated the one they have promised their life to. Guilt is everywhere. Guilt is everywhere. And in this psalm, the guilt comes from sins against God. The guilt that is born, the guilt that is carried, is a terrible thing. It separates people from God. Revelation 12 call Satan the accuser of God's people. And did you know that after the crucifixion and the resurrection of our Lord Christ, Satan has no more access to God? He was thrown out of heaven. So guess where he goes to accuse now? He used to accuse people in front of God himself. Now he just accuses us individually. And sometimes the guilt he accuses us of. Oh, and by the way, folks, let me share. Being aware of sin and feeling guilt over forgiven sin are two different things. You should be aware of your sin. You should be aware of your sin. Because if you're not aware of your sin, you will feel free to repeat it. There's a word for that. It's called the law. That's why God gave it. That we might be aware of it and confess it, and repent of it, and receive forgiveness for it. But Satan, he likes to accuse us. And sometimes when Satan accuses us, we buy into it. We buy into it. And that guilt can become acute. Oh boy, Oof. stab you right there. Okay? But sometimes it's like a chronic illness, low-grade pain, always there, never gone. Satan does everything Satan can do to separate you from God. But folks, let's zoom in. Let's zoom in. Look at what the psalmist is saying. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I hope, my soul waits for the Lord more than watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love and with him is plentiful redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all his iniquity. You see, forgiveness 
Folks, the forgiveness that creates the relationship which you have with God is not based on anything in you. Remember, deep end of the pool, deep part of the lake. Self-help books and self-help have no business because they can't help you in this spot. It takes someone outside of yourself to bring you out of the depths. And forgiveness is dependent on God doing what God said God would do. He himself will redeem Israel. Forgiveness is based on God doing what God said God would do. And Jesus is God dying on the cross. Jesus is God forgiving you and taking your guilt away. And that ought to fill you with awe and wonder. Awe and wonder. And there's one more phrase. I already read it a couple times, but we don't get this part in our culture because of our definition of the word. But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared The Old Testament concept of fear is rooted in the relationship and it is rooted in reverence and awe. And it's what generates in us as his forgiven people the desire to serve. The desire to serve others in the way we have been served with forgiveness, with hope, with love. It is Jesus who makes that possible. And it is his love which calls us to faith and it generates in us the chance, the opportunity, even the desire to serve and to serve and to be alive beyond guilt. Because guilt weighs you down. And it also will generate what we need to serve beyond the grave. Because not even the death of our bodies can stop the praise and awe of God. So folks, I think what we're trying to say here is mourning is broken. Mourning has broken. Mourning has always broken for the children of God. In Christ, is. In Christ, we are forgiven. In Christ, our guilt is taken away. Wow. Think about it with me. From out of the depths to mourning is broken. Isn't it amazing what happens when you zoom in? And when you zoom in on Christ? Because God has done what God said God would do. And he's done it in Jesus. So zoom in on him. Guilt-free. Amen? Amen. Pastor. Would you please stand? Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing for prayer. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we join with the church in every place, praying for the world that God so loves. Lord God, you call your church to be one and teach us that a house divided against itself cannot stand. Overcome our separations in the body of Christ and make us one diverse family, the brothers and sisters of Jesus, here and at Trinity Lutheran Church in Clear Lake, Minnesota, and St. Paul on the Shore Lutheran Church in Hallwood, Virginia. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord God, with you there is forgiveness and hope, and you love your whole creation. Help us order our lives so that human activity in your creation gives voice to hope. Empower us to bring healing in your world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord God, you still walk among us and we still hide ourselves from you out of fear. We withdraw from strangers and those unlike ourselves, the very people you call us to love. Replace our fear with trust, remove enmity between nations, and grant us peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord God, your compassion continually reaches into the lives of your people. Visit with loving kindness those experiencing afflictions of any kind, especially those affected by natural disasters in Hawaii and Guatemala, and those we name before you now, silently or aloud. Renew all of us and prepare us for glory so that we do not lose heart. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord God, more than those who watch for the morning, our souls wait and watch for you. In these months of summer, grow our knowledge of you and deepen our prayer lives as we zoom in on our study of the Psalms, watching and waiting for you at every turn. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord God, you raised Jesus from the dead and promised to raise us with him and bring us into his presence. We remember those who have died and we call out to you on behalf of those who mourn, especially Joaho and family. We thank you for your steadfast love and power to redeem. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. By the sure guidance of your Holy Spirit, O God, we lift up our prayers in trust and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And our worship continues with the offering.
Will you please stand for prayer? Let us pray. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. God's peace, Kim. We heard in the psalm this morning, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. And what that means for us here this morning is that this is enough, because Jesus is enough for you, for your sins, for wherever you are in the depths. His body and blood comes to you here in this meal, and so come and receive him, who is enough for you today and always. The table is set. Please be seated.
Would you please stand? And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his joy and in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. Wise and generous God, we thank you that at this holy table you have fed us again with the food of everlasting life. Send us with your blessing to seek the good of our neighbor and call others to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Peace, the Spirit sends us forth to serve. Thanks be to God.